Welcome to my channel. This is an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified of future videos. Please feel free to share my videos on your social media. And I hope you enjoy the video which follows. Well, hello everybody. It is April 30th as I'm starting to put a few clips together for this weekend's video. Just received a shipment of trees, uh, one-year seedlings, one-year-old seedlings. All varieties that are supposed to be hardy enough for the zone that I live in. I live in zone 5B. Uh, and these are good down to zone 4. But none of them grow in this area. I've never seen any of them grow in this area, so I wanted to give it a try. <laughs> one-year-old seedlings. I just had my 70th birthday a few weeks ago, so I don't expect to be around <laughs> when they're huge and blooming and everything. But I'll give you a little look at them, uh, along with some photographs from the, from the Internet here. The first one I've already potted up. Uh, this is Eastern Red Bud. And it's, I think, a fairly good-looking example, although I don't really see any buds that have swollen on that yet. But they come in little plugs like this, and I'm going to pot them into one-gallon grow bags. And I will grow them this year in the grow bags. I'll heal them in one of the beds in the uh, hoop post for this coming winter. And next year they'll be planted out somewhere. So that is Eastern Redbud. Well, isn't that a pretty thing? And evidently not a huge tree anyway. So there's a possibility I may be around long enough to see that bloom. <laughs> I've never seen one oh anywhere in the area here. Um, I know they're down in oh Massachusetts, maybe southern Maine or somewhere, but. Fingers crossed that I can grow it here anyway. And this one is Honey Locust. A very short one, but it does seem to have a lot of buds. Instructions that came with them is to cut a third off of the top of the tree when you plant it. And I, I know that's what you really are supposed to do, but cut a third off of that, there's not much left. I like the color. And according to the legend below this particular photograph, that tree is only 12 to 15 feet tall, so it's not an enormous tree either. But if memory serves me, the locust trees have incredible long thorns on them. So, so nothing that you really want to go climbing when it's full grown, I guess. And this one is a burr oak. Oak, uh, very, very few of them that you ever find here in naturally growing in the forest. I have a red oak on my property, but I planted it from a seedling, oh dear, <laughs> about 1974 or so. My father and I planted it, and after my father passed away, my mother sold the uh, home that I grew up in. It was just too big for her to rattle, and, <laughs> rattle around in all alone. And I said, well, you're selling the house, but the oak tree doesn't go with it. I dug it up and moved it to my property. It's enormous now. It's got to be 60, 70 feet tall, and the trunk's so large you can't get your arms around it. But that one is called a burr oak, anyway. Well, now we're getting into something that can develop into an enormous tree. Luckily, I have a lot of property. <laughs> I'll have to go down through my forest and see if I can find an opening large enough somewhere to plant it in, and I hope it has acorns. My red oak has been here all those years and has never produced an acorn, and I check it every year thinking, well, maybe this will be the year. So let's hope that the burr oak is better at its acorn making. And this one is a hackberry, H-A-C-K, berry. Nice long stem on that. Good. A good amount of growth from one year. I don't know if they root cuttings or if they grow them from seed or what. The uh, chestnuts, American chestnut or Asian chestnut, whatever it is that I'm growing, um, I grew from chestnuts and they're about, about that size, I guess, after one year growth. Well, the hackberry is, an, again, a nice big tree. 
and as the name indicates, it does have a berry, also referred to as a knot. So I'm assuming it must have a, like a knot or a large stone inside of the small berry or whatever that's on it. And I haven't read anywhere that it's something that anybody would eat. I suspect it's food for the animals in the wild, but find a place to grow it and hopefully there'll be lots of berries for the critters around here. And the last one here is a black locust. Well, I will get them all in their one gallon grow bags and show you that when I finish. And last but not least is the black locust. I tried growing it from seed a few years ago and didn't have any success. It gets a very bad reputation. It's called invasive and all sorts of things. Once again, I think it has a lot of thorns on it. It has large panicles of white blossoms in the spring and then produces lots of seed towards fall. Um, invasive some places. I got my dotes. It would be very invasive here. I'd be lucky if I managed to keep one alive and large enough that I get to see it bloom. But anyway, that's the last of the five new trees all potted up and uh, hopefully are going to leave out and grow for me this summer. Well, they are the five down on the end. The four up on this end are my chestnut trees that are also just starting to break leaf. So that was good timing. I'm glad these arrived when they're still nice and dormant. I've potted them up in the organic um, compost, pro-mix compost for vegetables and herbs. Well, they've got trees in them now. Uh, that I keep bragging about. I've had I've been cleaning out the greenhouse hoop house this morning, or the last two days, been trying to get it cleaned out. I find <laughs> a couple hours a day is plenty for me right now. But anyway, I'll, I'll get there eventually and hopefully show you something of what's going on in there before I upload this video. We do not have nettles. I've never seen nettles here on Campobello, and I've been just about every place that you can be, walked all the trails, and I've never encountered nettles. I've never heard of anybody saying that their children got into nettles. And in my hoop house, there were four nettle plants, one quite large, growing in four different locations. The only thing that I can think of that I did differently last year was I used that organic compost for the first time, and I really like it. It does a wonderful job, but I don't know whether the nettle seeds would have been in that or not. Other than that, where on earth would they have come from inside the hoopos? Anyway, I'm back using tons of it again this year, so if that's the case, I'll have more nettles next year. But a young family that just moved here uh, from uh, Manitoba, I guess, yes, Winnipeg, um, via Japan, they lived and worked in Japan before they came here, they had been looking for nettles and uh, I told them that they don't exist here. Well, I've got them all uprooted in a box and they're going to get their nettles this afternoon. Well, it's May 2nd. My weekly video is going to be late this week. Would have finished it yesterday, but it rained all day. What you're looking at there is a species tulip. There's another one in behind it, I guess, too. Uh, very closely related to the thing that was all the rage in the 17th century. When people put thousands of dollars into, a, or the equivalent of thousands of dollars, into a single bulb. And that's what tulips that you see today were bred up from. I just love the little things. They're so hardy, they multiply even. I'm going to take you out and show you some things that's going on in the garden and what I've been up to in the hoop house. Well, when I put this thing up over the bed where I'm going to grow my brassicas, I was concerned about the wind uh, pulling the little tent pegs out of the ground and the thing flying away. It doesn't do that. It collapses. This is about the third time that I've had to go over and, and set it back up. When the wind hits it, it sort of folds in on itself. I think I'd be better off if it blew away. At least I could go find it and put it back. If it keeps collapsing, it's going to destroy the plants that are under it. easy enough to set it back up, but I just wish it didn't keep happening. I topped this bed up with a bale of the organic Pro Mix, 
and it's looking better now than it did yesterday. When I came out yesterday, I presume it was the raccoons. Something had been digging in it, dug up all over it everywhere, trying to see if I planted something there that might be good to eat, I guess. But it's holding up fairly well. It's, we've had that heavy rain yesterday, and that's good too. The, the dry pro mix tends to blow around, so it's all packed down nicely. But that's where I'm going to plant my nine strawberry seedlings, probably sometime the first week of June. Well, my peas are starting to come up. I planted two varieties. Uh, what you're looking at there, not that I'm making much difference, any pea coming up looks about the same. That's one called Yorkshire Hero, a Yorkshire Hero pea. Uh, if you want to Google that, it's quite interesting. I'll just read a little bit off of the package here. It says, excellent compact shelling pea with rich flavor, historically common, but very rare today. Well, the seed packet didn't have very many seeds, so... I will eat a few of them, and if I really like them, I'll let the rest of them mature and dry so I have more to plant next year. And they are a uh, bush pea, dwarf pea, whatever. I think the instructions said they'll grow up to 18. They're the ones that grow 18 inches tall. And anyway, they're less than 2 feet tall. I still give them a little bit of staking. And the other uh, one is a just a commercially available pea seed called Lactin's Progress, and it also is a compact variety growing 15 inches tall. But I don't know how long they've been in, but at least a couple of weeks, I think, and uh, just starting to come up now. It was quite cool earlier on, but glad to see them poking their heads up. Uh, next to them is a bed of carrots, and nothing is up there yet, but I didn't expect, they were planted at the same time, and I didn't expect them to be up this soon. Carrots can take up to three weeks, and we're just finally now starting to get some warm weather, so they'll come up pretty soon now. Well, you can see that little bit of greenery in the center there. That's my spinach just starting to come up. They were put in the same time as the peas. Uh, quite a bit of it, actually. It's, it's, it's a little bed, four foot square. It has my garlic in it, which is also coming up nicely now. I think I put four rows at least in there with the garlic, and the garlic's coming up in between the, or right up with the spinach, so hopefully that will work out. The spinach will be gone in short order. I have to eat it quite early in the spring before it bolts. Well, one of my subscribers, Sandra, thank you Sandra, somebody who lives here in the same province that I live in, sent me a gift of seeds. Radishes that I've already planted, and uh, today I'm going to plant beets and cosmos. The beets are a variety that I've never grown before, but it's got me intrigued. They're from Bessie's, Bessie Seeds. The variety is called Robin. Perfect whole baby beets, it says. Uniform top and root results in easy picking. Dark red stem, stems and green result in a great visual contrast. Deep dark red, one to, one to two inch round beets. Very sweet. This hybrid is a great choice for both home and market gardener. Oh, mine definitely a home garden. Matures as a baby beet in 25 to 35 days. I have to give that a try. <laughs> I always like to start mine, um, and I'm trying to put one seed only in each one of these 84 cells. I like to start mine because you can transplant them and you don't have to do any thinning. Um, get the spacing right when you're transplanting them and I seem to have better luck when I start them off this way so that's what I'm doing again as I said I'm only trying to put one seed in each because what you're planting when you plant a beet seed is not just a single seed except for some of the uh, hybrids that have had the old traits uh, bread out of them, but it's actually a little packet of several seeds, so you may only get one germinating, you may get several from the from the one seed. And I'll bring you back when I finish doing this. So my cosmos seeds, the variety is called Rubenza, 
The deepest red we have ever seen in a cosmos, it says, where Benza has won the Flora Select Novelty Award for its ruby red flowers, a job, a, a gem among cosmos. There. That's got to be And I will put a little pinch of seeds in each pot. If I have to thin them, I'll thin them. There's 18 pots here. Well, when I finish this, I'll take you in and show you what's happening in the hoopos after three days of working in there. It's in the cosmos that I just seeded in. And they're on black plastic. Uh, under the white shroud, I brought out my onion seedlings and shallot seedlings. They're also on black plastic. The white uh, row cover isn't so much to protect them from frost, although it would do that if we get another frost. I've got two layers of it on, on there acting as a shade cloth because they've been under lights, they're just not used to the bright light yet. So for three or four days they'll be under two la layers of the shade cloth and then I will uh, remove one layer for another three or four days before they get exposed to the, the full light. Well, it was a major job in here. <laughs> it always is. I didn't do anything last fall other than close the door. So I have been the best part of three days. Got it all weeded and cleaned out. And this morning I put the uh, organic pro mix on top of all of the beds. Uh, I'll take you in a minute and show you two or three things that have come through the winter quite well. But on the back wall you can probably see the the grapevine been pruned back to the main trunk. It has a double trunk. That's the beta one, the one that's like a Concord grape. If you can see off to the right, a skinny little stem going up into the air. It isn't even a named variety. It just has a number. I got it from Cornhill Nursery up above Sussex, New Brunswick. If I remember rightly, it's supposed to be like a green seedless dessert grape. At least that's what I went for when I ordered it. <laughs> I think that's what I got. That's got to be at least three years ago, and I didn't realize that it grew that much last summer. It was in amongst some other weeds and whatever growing along the ground, and I have just put it up in the air. It's got little buds that are trying to burst out, so I don't think it will actually produce any fruit this year, but it's, at least it's developing. And that two-trunk thing on the left there, it is amazing the amount of growth that will put on. I cut everything right back to the trunk and there will be whips on that eight feet long before the summer is over with. So I'll take you in and show you one or two things. Replaying the video in my head, <laughs> I don't think I finished the sentence. Uh, I was going to explain why they're on black plastic. I went down a rabbit hole somewhere and didn't come back up. Two reasons. The black plastic will uh, absorb more heat and heat the soil up down below the seedlings. And after dark, when everything starts cooling down, it'll give that heat back off. But also, the trays that have my onions and shallots in, and that tray that's got the beets in, have holes in the bottom. And if you put them directly on the soil, they grow their roots right out through the holes and down into the dirt. I don't know if it does any great damage, but you've got to rip it out of the ground before you can transplant them. So. That's the reason for them being on black plastic. Last fall I tried growing some, well I call turnips, so here I go again with the litany of the names, but they're called rutabagas, turnips, and in Europe called swedes, I guess. And they didn't get very big and I just ignored them. There were several left in here, and they were fairly solid. Uh, pulled most of them up and threw them away, but that one already was starting to grow, so I thought that'll be interesting. I will grow that on. I'm sure a second season like this it will produce seeds or bloom. I'll get to see what a turnip blossom <laughs> looks like I guess and maybe even collect some seeds off of the thing. And you can see the little green patch next to it. That's dill. It's just one of the patches of dill that I found in here when I was weeding and cleaning up. But there are probably a million dill seeds in here. I don't uh, do anything. I just let my dill go to seed. Never have to plant it. It keeps coming up. So I'm sure there'll be lots more come up before the spring is over with here. And that's Bloody Dock. 
uh, which came through the winter beautifully. It's been up and growing for quite a while. Those are all new leaves. It dies right down to the ground in the fall. Um, <laughs> I have no use for it other than it's pretty. You're we supposed to be able to use it in a salad or whatever. I tried it. It's far too bitter for me. I won't be eating it. This is French tarragon coming up through last year's dead stems. I always make sure that I say French tarragon in case there's somebody that doesn't know the difference. I found out the hard way years ago. You can buy seeds for tarragon and you're not going to get French tarragon. Uh, you'll get something called Russian tarragon and to my taste it was horrible. I couldn't think of any of it but ever want to eat the stuff. French tarragon is sterile. It does not produce seeds. It can only be reproduced by root cuttings. So that's I got this many years ago from uh, Richter's Herbs here in Canada. Great company. Uh, anything you want to mention in herbs. And it comes back for me every year. And this is an Asian chive. That's all it was called. It was Asian chives when I bought the seed packet many years ago. The stems are larger than the conventional chive. I've got some ordinary, regular chives coming from my Richter's order this spring. Uh, I really like the thing. They're almost, in, in the summertime, once they really get growing, they're almost like a green onion. The, the uh, stems on them are big enough, but as you can see down in there, I've already been cutting. I had one omelette. Well, that is just about it for in the greenhouse here, I guess. I'll take you in, and to finish this off, we'll do a quick little look around at uh, what's growing under the lights. Well, the brassica seedlings and the lettuce seedlings are looking pretty good. The scotch kale seems a little flimsy yet. And the lettuce, butter crunch, is sort of flopping over, but hopefully I can correct that when I plant it out in the garden. And I'm pleased to say that the cutting celery did finally germinate. Many little seedlings came up in each of the six little pots there. Um, at first I thought I'll keep them all, and then, well, I don't know how that actually grows. So I've got six plants anyway, we'll see what I do with it later on. But I'm really pleased with the other brassicas, the broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage, looking very good. And the dahlias are coming along nicely. It'll be about a month before I can put them out. So if they continue to grow like this for another month, they'll be a, a decent sized little plant to put out in planters and whatever. I'm trying an experiment. <laughs> so far it's not doing too much. I had a, a bottle of organic fennel seeds for, you know, for cooking that you buy in the grocery store. I wondered if they're viable, so I sprinkled quite a few of them in this. Must be three, four days ago. I don't know how long they take to germinate, but so far, nada. Nothing is happening. Well, the cold tomato plants are doing quite well. Looking a little helter-skelter right now. I just moved them all around. That's where the uh, onions used to be. And so I've, I've put them in a, in, in a row of, of two pots to a row so they would get more direct light from the light bar that's above them. Like any tomato plant, no matter where I've got the lights, they always seem to grow quite tall and spindly. But you can plant them deeper and just leave the you know top six or eight inches or so out of the ground so I'm sure that's what I'll have to do again. I really like the coal variety though so I'm glad that the plants are surviving. Last but not least my strawberry plants and my five Norway spruce trees. <laughs> they're all surviving that's a good thing about it I guess. The strawberry plants are I don't know they're up now to four or five leaves growing faster now since they've got more more leaf surface but there are nine of them and they're hopefully well, they'll all survive and go in that round bed well that will conclude the video I'll get this wrapped up and up on YouTube and out as soon as I can get it out with my slow internet connection it'll take close to 24 hours at least to upload it but thank you very much for watching